trouble. Off the corner, Carly inside, Burton. Jeff Burton spins. Covers. But the good news is, as you can see right there, Daryl, you've talked about this a lot. There should be no grass on the inside of a racetrack. If there had been grass there, yeah. it would not stop till it hit the inside wall. It wouldn't have stopped till uh, when no he quit flipping. Left front's down, but watch think, the orange 31. I gotta believe he might have gotten a little tap over there. Let's see if we can find out here. It's almost like he checked up a little bit as he was running up on Dave Blaney in the 22 car. Yeah, Casey Mears was just coming, and uh, Jeff Burton there in the 31 had to check up a tad, and he got bumped. Oh, Daryl. Deja vu all over again. Jeff Burton and Casey Mears. <laughs> yeah, same two cars that uh, had trouble in practice. In this case, Burton's trying to stay off Dave Blaney. Casey Mears gets in the back of him. Look what happened in practice when Jeff Burton cuts down a tire. Look who the other two cars involved are. And again, everyone was a victim in this situation right here. This was in the very final practice. Jeff Burton cutting tire down. Casey Mears nowhere to go. Dave Blaney, there was nowhere to go for him, ran into the back of J.J. Yaley. And that's his backup car that he's in right now. is out for the second time tonight. Or Jeff Gordon or Bobby Labonte been saving something for Stewart. Racing for fifth place, Jimmy Johnson and Bobby Labonte have crashed. We're under caution. Pit road is open. Steve. Four tires for Matt Kenseth. It's coming out pit road. He said, let's show him what we're made of, guys. No other adjustments. Just four brand new tires for Kenseth. Dick. Tony. Watch the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Now, there's cars all around. You get to two here. He's moving air. 38's back here looking for which way am I going to go, and it gets Jimmy loose right there, and he can't catch it, and poor Bobby Labonte is on the outside going down into turn three, and they get hooked together. And as we have well made note, that's at over 180 miles per hour you're turning down in that corner. And what's happening right there is just too many cars moving around. The two, the 38, and it got Jimmy loose, and unfortunately Bobby was on the outside of it. Bobby isn't there. Jimmy may have not even hit the wall. He may have gone up and kissed it. But uh, with Bobby there, you see it. Johnson's car is now under repair on Pit Road. And Labonte is being pushed back to the garage area. Little contact there. Forces his way past teammate Denny Hamlin. And he stays on the bottom, going straight toward the front. It's like the seas he just parted, parted for Tony Stewart. Cannot believe how that happened. Stewart is up to second. Let's go to the garage, Steve Burns. With Bobby Labonte, uh, Bobby, how disappointing with a great race car and a great team effort to be here in the garage. No, we're so disappointing, you know. I know. Here we yeah. go, boys. Got the big one off of turn two back, back here, guys. Well, we'll get back to Bobby Labonte in a moment as teammates Mark Martin and Greg Biffle have crashed. Actually, it wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be when it started. There were a lot of cars around, but only two really got involved. A lot of right front corner damage. Whoa, there's another one. I didn't see him. And so tire up there as well on the 99. Let's see what happened here, Daryl. Well, let's see. We're up in the middle here. Bunch of three wide. The two... The 16 of Biffle and Gordon coming. Oh, Yaley gets into the back of the 16. 
just caught him in that left rear quarter panel. Nowhere for Mark Martin to go. But look at Denny Hamlin, Kent, Clint Boyer just barely getting by, as well as Ryan Newman. And it's so hard to know for sure. Did 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 Yaley get into him because he ran into him, or did he cut down in front of him, or did he lift a little bit coming off of that corner? Let's see if the aerial view shows. Does Biffle turn down, or does Yaley come up? Or no, is it a I'm combination sure, of both. Pretty sure Yaley gets up right about here. This car on the bottom. And then he gets the, nope. the 24 coming there. He's just in that pocket where you don't have a lot of air blowing on your car. Boys, I call it hard racing with six laps yeah. to go. Yeah, I, was, I don't put any blame on anybody. That's just uh, we saw it. You see that coming at the end of this race. The simple explanation of whether Biffle turned down or Yaley came up, the simple explanation is the hole closed up. Yeah, you see it right here from another angle. Oh, you see what happens? Biffle got loose. Biffle's car was getting loose, and that's why Yaley got into him. And just nowhere for Mark Martin to go at all in the six. I love it. We get so many great looks, and you first see this, and then you see that, and then, then you see the real deal. And Biffle's car just stepped out on him, and that's why Yaley got into him. Watch. It's hard to tell from this angle, but see Biffle's car start to get a little loose right there? Definitely, you would have to say J.J. Yaley was at no fault No, no, J.J. didn't do any. He, he Not did at all. Right there, you see it perfectly clear. And Jeff Gordon, again, kind of like uh, the 43 car was, just on the outside of a car at the wrong time. And, and Daryl, that's probably why, when, when you look at some of these cars that were involved, I question the four tires the that late in the race puts you that far back. The best you can. We got wrecked off of two, guys. Well, I don't know how many tires Tony Stewart really took. <laughs> He's went to the front. It didn't hurt him. <laughs> no, it has not. That's exactly right. Yeah, well, that's a hard thing for Jeff Gordon. Gordon said the right front was done, and he had no brakes. He has climbed out of the Pepsi DuPont Chevrolet. Now, here's where boys might be a little bit nervous. Set and Stewart side by side. Stewart has help. Two to go. How would you like to be used to turn it off into the infield right down there, but you're running 190 mile an hour in can? Said slips to third. The glass slipper almost fit. Listen, he has got his hands full. There's no question about that. That car, we know, is it's all over the place. But here comes Kyle Bush's brother, Kurt Bush, up there to push his brother, the five car, Kyle. Watch Boris's car. He just wants to wait his walk up the racetrack with him. He's just chasing him. He doesn't need anybody up behind him. The blood is thicker than water, but most brothers in racing would rather beat their own brother than anybody else. How about the Bush brothers? Well, we're going to find out here, boys. It's one to go, and the Bush boys are in hot pursuit. And here comes Matt Kenseth, and that 17 car on the high side. He's getting help from his teammate, McMurray, in the 26. Kenseth has never won here, but he's taking the long way around on the outside. Just remember, it gets really tense coming down the back right here. You start blocking in turn three. Caution is out. Caution is out. Will we go to overtime or will the checkered flag wave? That's it. We were in a white flag lap. We took the white flag. We took the white flag. The field is frozen at the moment of caution. The yellow flag waves as they come toward the finish line. Tony Stewart. And the Home Depot Chevrolet will score the second win of 2006 and the 26th career victory for Stewart. But I'm going to tell you what, regardless of the circumstances, the caution laps that were there, the race ended under caution, how about Boris said? <laughs> Set on the pole, a top five finish, and a great call by Frank Stoddard, his crew chief. Wasn't it Frank Stoddard that made him write a new rule in the all-star race? Yes. Oh, yeah. Remember that when he yep. pitted uh, and just crossed the line and took the lead? Better to be a rule maker than a rule breaker. And I think this should help them sell more cases now. <laughs> and run more races. <laughs> oh.
you got to hand it to Stewart. Starting Thursday night here, when he thoroughly dominated the International Race of Champions, putting on a driving clinic on the infield road course. And he ran last night's Bush Series race. And here he is going to victory lane for the second time this weekend. It appears to me the more he races, the better he gets. And I tell you, I saw him get in that car before the race started. We had a camera on him. And he was grimacing getting down in that race car. It's been three hot nights here, guys. Now, let me see. Was it not about a year ago? This is where Tony Stewart started climbing fences. As a matter of fact, it was. Carl Edwards sped past the whole pack at the start-finish line, and he has been invited to a discussion with the NASCAR officials. I think he was trying to the lead lap. What he was trying to do. But you can't, you know, you got a rough pace there. You got, the field is frozen, so what do it for good? Tell you, somebody else is going to enjoy this night. Matt Kenseth unofficially finishes sixth, and unofficially that will put him within ten points of points leader Jimmy Johnson, who had a rough night in that 48 car. Yeah, and Jeff Gordon finished 40, knocked him back out of the top ten. Tony Stewart is becoming the master of plate racing, restrictor plate racing at Daytona and Talladega, and I like this window net down, driver side to salute the crowd. As he comes to the flag stand. Yeah, I don't believe we're going to see any fence climbing tonight. That wing might be all right, but I don't think I'd want to test it. Give me the flag like I used to do back on the dirt tracks in Indiana. I think he might come out, Darrell. I think he's, going ah, he's coming out. Oh, well. He's got a lot of backups to come over here and help him. Here comes the whole team. I watched him swing that hammer about two weeks ago at Michigan. They built that fence for the same reason there are mountains. To climb. See him look up and say, how high is this fence anyway? He scaled that thing pretty rapidly. Oh, he did. That's what a grin, that's what winning will do for you. Tony Stewart climbs the fence and captures the flag. Yes. Nice job, buddy. The smoker. That is his signature salute to the fans of this sport. There's a lot of reasons he's happy about this right here because when you look back at his last six races, he has only had one top ten finish. Well, and Larry, think about this. He, he's won four of the next six races and counting, counting tonight. Last year he won four of the last six races counting tonight. So this is his time, baby. And he's, a, he's over He's over in the crowd. He's in a monster. Now that, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Hey, this fella's hot. Everybody wants a piece of Tony Stewart. We'll find Stewart in victory lane next. Fireworks on this 4th of July weekend, and welcome to the next tell from Sprint Post Race Show, the Pepsi 400, won by Tony Stewart, leading a series of times 86 of the laps out of 160. And Chevy congratulates Tony Stewart and the 20 car, the Monte Carlo SS, another great team victory for Chevy. 25 of the last 43 NASCAR Manufacturers Championships and counting Chevy on American Revolution. The caution out with three laps to go and with Kyle Busch behind him, the push, Tony Stewart passing Boris said, who wound up fourth as Tony Stewart pulls into victory lane, describing Daytona as a 190 mile per hour traffic jam at a chess game with 43 players is what he talked about this race coming in. He called it a constant juggling match, trying to figure out where you need to be, who you need to go with, and in the end, he captured the flag, and like a rock star in the mosh pit, Tony mixing it up with some folks and some fans, and his crew, almost looking like an NFL team here, <laughs> helping to get him through the crowd. Here's a guy who had a broken shoulder blade, Never needed a relief driver in one stretch, toughed it out, and is back in victory lane at the Pepsi 400. Coach said, give him the ball, and they've got it. <laughs> 
We had a record, a Pepsi 400 record, 15 different leaders, 29 lead changes late. Boris said had that lead. Looks like he might pull it off. Let's check in with Boris said and Matt Yoke.